surface research has pointed out to our competitors that what people want are cleaner clothes and whiter laundry. Now, while this is basically true and it is what people will repeat, is this indeed as deep as you want to go and is this indeed what people think about? Is it really their attitude toward laundry? Well, it isn't. The philosophy of our agency is hinged on this little sign on my desk, empathy. It's based on finding out the fundamental relationship of the woman to the problem not the rational manifestation of the polite society answer to detergents, which is, I want whiter laundry. Well, of course she wants whiter laundry. But more than wanting whiter laundry, she'd wish to God that she had a permanent laundress and didn't have any laundry. So that when we go to this woman, without the platitude of whiter than whiter than whiter, all the way from, from white to bright, such as our competitors indulge in, we sit down with this woman, whether it be print or television or radio, and we say to her very simply, we understand you, we sympathize with you. So the white knight comes along and he, as we say, zaps people and the clothes are magically clean. And she says, my God, those people understand me. That's how I really feel. Stronger than dirt. It's almost pressing the button on all of mythology. If you believe in Jung and the evolution of the, uh, of the species exemplified in the birth of each child, you must realize that through history there has been the myth of the great knight and the great hero who will carry me off and with whom I will live happily forever. Stronger than dirt. Now, you might say to me, well, this sounds a little specious. Just by talking to a woman and telling her you're her friend and you understand her, why will she buy your product? I could give you a quick and simple answer and say, well, they just do. Stronger than dirt. What we're going to do is try a couple of these uh, salad dressings. Motivation research simply means trying to find out the reasons for people doing something. I like the salad very much. I wouldn't hesitate to use it for company. You know what I think this is? Yeah. This would be the compromise uh -huh. for a woman feeling creative. I see. I think that um, it has a place uh -huh. in our American way of life. Good morning. I'm Mary Drum from Mary Young Associates. We're doing a short time. I'm from Mary Young Associates. We're conducting a TV show. Okay. And we'd like okay. to have your opinion of a TV show. Now, uh, what was the very last brand of margarine that you purchased yourself? Underarm deodorants. What brand do you think of first? Uh, Tussie. And how about the deodorants? High and dry. High and dry. Okay. And how about the candy bars? Um, Milky Way. Milky Way. All right, good. Now, we have a little short film in the trailer that we'd like you to take a look at. stop people coming outside of uh, large grocery stores or shopping centers. And they're screened to see if they qualify, and then they're asked to come into the mobile unit and um, are shown a film clip with commercials embedded in it. As a child, England's Elizabeth could not know that she was one day destined to be queen. Hello, I'm Hello. Arlene Shrek from American Marketing Research and we're conducting a TV preview today and we'd like to have your opinion on the show. It'll only take a few minutes of your time, and if you do participate, we have a gift for you with our compliments. And how about underarm deodorants? What is the one that you think of first? Uh, secret. I sure hope this new band spray deodorant works. You hope it works. With light held constant, you get changes in the constriction and dilation of the pupil of the eye, which correlate to the emotional value or the interest with which people view visual or hear auditory stimuli. Therefore, we get a track which might have high points, low points, and we can determine from this what elements of the commercial are involving to respondents, what elements of the commercial might be generating negative responses, and which elements of the commercial are most effective. How can we fix up and repair this commercial? And what we found was that male respondents, and of course we purposely only tested male respondents, had a dramatic increase in pupil response for this particular segment of the commercial. We call these phrases propositions. I dare say that if I read them to you quickly, they will sound like a great deal of advertising you've heard. And I can also prove to you that this indeed is advertising for most advertising agencies. It's reasonable, it describes the product, but it's dead, it's dull, it's prosaic, it has no interest. The product is handy wrap, you, you, you enclose sandwiches with it instead of wax paper, and it keeps food conveniently fresh. We say, use handy wrap and you will win your husband's approbation. 
he won't think much of you if you give him a sandwich to take to his factory and at 12 o'clock he takes out that sandwich and it's dry as a bone and it sticks in his mouth. Beware of the spoiler. He dries out pickles, dries up sandwiches. You call this emotional? I don't really think so. Ajax Floor and Wall Cleaner is the most powerful modern cleaning powder in the world. We had a campaign that said... It works like a wizard, works like a wizard. But can it clean a floor so dull and greasy? Ajax gets your floor so shining clean, you'll lead the brightest life that you have ever seen. And so it goes. <laughs>